Ohio was named after the Ohio River, which means Great River in Iroquois. Also, being a birthplace of seven US presidents, Ohio has a deep-rooted influence in American history, so let's hear three stories that take us to the past of America and the historical state's affiliation with ghosts. Intelligent Haunt in Ohio This haunting wasn't really caught until my brothers and I began moving out of our parents' home as we reached college age. The home was built in the 1870s. It began with my dad who worked third shift. He complained that when he'd arrive home in the morning, before we awoke, we were leaving dry paper cups in the bathroom beside the sink. After all of us denied doing this every single night, he joked, maybe we have a ghost. The first time I think was caught when we all denied it. Closed the door when he left for work and went to bed. He arrived home for work, and sure enough, there was a cup. My theory was the heat register, etc. Dad was convinced something odd was going on though. So one night, he pulled out a cup, placed it in the spot, then shut the door and went to work. In the morning, he found his cup flipped upside down with a new cup stacked on top. Okay, things are getting weird. Next, he draped a tissue over the spot. When he arrived home, the cup was in its usual place, with his Kleenex draped over top. This ruled out the register to me. Maybe someone in the house playing tricks? This option was ruled out for me when we went to dinner one night. I played a joke on my father by putting a cup in the spot, trying to trick him. He caught it before we left. We laughed, and then I put the cup away and shut the bathroom door. I also locked the front door on the way to the restaurant. Upon returning home, I opened the bathroom door and there was the entire cup dispenser pulled from the wall and sitting in the spot. My skin literally crawled. I was scared to death, as were the rest of my family. Somebody was reaching out to us and responding to our actions. It seemed like the more we recognized it, the more actions occurred. My dad eventually left the pencil in the spot. The next morning, there's the cup with his pencil balanced on top. Soon after, he began writing small notes. Who are you, etc. We'd often get very, very small check marks or X's. The answers seemed to make no sense. Once, we even got initials, MC. They were so tiny and faint scrawls. Lo and behold, we later discovered a Mabel Close had lived in the house in the 1920s. My parents bought the house from her son, who was estranged from her until her death. Eventually, the direct communications ended because things got too weird. It was uncomfortable to live there. My dad charted the cup for years. This had happened for over 20 years. In the beginning, they happened three to four times per week now maybe once a month. He still has every calendar and note. We had one actual sighting. My dad always asked to see her while I always said, if you're here, I don't want to see you. One night, while my grandmother was visiting my dad, I woke to see something standing at the foot of his bed. He initially thought it was my grandmother, but said he quickly focused to see the outline of a woman. She was wearing a black dress, paisley pattern. Her hair was in a bun. He said she had no face, though just darkness. She faced him for a few seconds and then turned and glided across the room and through his bedroom floor. He said where she stood was actually in the middle of a cheddar chest. I was at college then. He called me out of breath. He was so excited. Other events occurred throughout the years. One night, while my mom was in the hospital after surgery and he was home alone, he heard heavy footsteps. He said he thought I was home from college. He heard footsteps up the stairs, then walking to my bedroom door. He said it sounded like as if the door was swollen, and I was striking it to try to open it. Then, the steps turned and came to his bedroom door. When I asked how loud, he said, 
like a basketball being dribbled hard. Well, he was scared senseless that night, and asked that whatever it was or whoever it was not scare him again. Looking back, I can think of some odd occurrences throughout the years. In the middle of the day, our doorbell would ring with no one there, hearing faint voices, conversations virtually every single night while I tried to sleep. These distant conversations were so frequent that I was almost terrified to go home. In the middle of the night, with my ears pressed to the pillow, I would always hear talking. I knew it was English, but I could never decipher a single word. It was odd. My dad later confessed he heard these conversations for years too, but was too afraid to say anything for fear of terrifying me. There were also small things thrown on occasion, balls rolled, items disappearing and reappearing again. 20 years after we first became aware of Mabel, and I'm still terrified to sleep at my parents' house. Maybe she's fading away, or just misses having the house full of boys, I don't know. But she was about as formidable a ghost could be. She could perform at 3 p.m. as easily at 3 a.m., no problem at all. If I tested her in midday, she would respond almost immediately. Oddly though, nobody ever caught her in the act. I place an item over her spot, leave the bathroom, and within two minutes she'd respond. Just very, very odd and interesting. I've always wondered about having a real investigation done. I always sensed she sincerely wanted to communicate something. I began as the ultimate skeptic, but really ruled out every single answer possible. Was someone in the house doing it? Well, the phenomena occurred regardless of who was in the house. My brothers would be gone, it occurred. My parents would be out of town or in the hospital, it occurred. No real explanations, but an intelligent haunting in Ohio. Debbie When I was a small child, I had many imaginary friends. One was named Moro, another was named Friday, but they were not weird at all because I knew that they were not real. There was one named Debbie that scared me to death and I thought she was as real as the day is blue. During my younger childhood, we moved around a lot because my parents never really liked to stay in one spot. There was this one house where we stayed where I remember I had the most activity. Well, this spirit named Debbie used to follow me around everywhere and scare the hell out of me. The first time she showed up was in a friend of my mom's house. I was playing with my toys in another room while they played my mom's friend's PlayStation. The story goes that I ran into the room they were playing in and started screaming, Debbie, stop, no. I was in tears. The boyfriend of the house went and checked the whole house and said that there was no one there. Another time I was at my grandparents' house. I wouldn't call it a house, but a mansion. I was sitting on the couch with my mom watching TV. When I started screaming, Debbie, stop. I don't want to play. This happened many times until my mom got tired of this and screamed over my sobs. Debbie, I don't know who you are or what you are, but you're dead. Leave my kid alone. It all stopped. No more screaming, no more crying, no more Debbie. That house was very creepy and full of stuff that was unexplainable. My mom said that she would wake up every morning at 5 a.m. and stare down the hallway where my room was. She felt that if she stared down there, whatever it was that was trying to walk down the hallway would stop. In the basement of the house where my uncle slept, we would get a very depressing, sad, and uneasy feeling. We did some later research about the house and found out that the lady who lived there before us had a husband who died of cardiac arrest in the hallway where my mom used to stare down. Turns out he was also very abusive towards his wife so she might have felt the spirit was evil. 
I need to know if Debbie was really there. More to come. A hug from beyond. Looking back, I have to wonder if it was a dream or if it was real. Let's just say it felt very real. I've been hugged by many people in my life, but not like that. It definitely had a sense of forever about it. And the fact that it came from my dead father only made it more meaningful. Dad took sick in 1999 and spent the rest of his life struggling to deal with his health issues. He died in February 2001. He was a usually stout, independent man who prided himself in taking care of others. When he was reduced to a mere shell of his former self, my heart went out to him. But to me, he was still my faithful protector. After he died, a bit of me died too. I missed him so much. I had seen him nearly every day and knew his time was running out. I hate to admit it, but I wanted to run away from what was coming. It hurt so much. Then, a few weeks after he passed away, I had the most vivid dream I had ever had. I was sitting at a table with two chairs in a white room with no windows, only, only a door. At first, I wondered why I was there. I didn't have a clue where I was. I wanted to leave, but all of a sudden, the door opened, and my dad walked in, dressed in the clothes he was buried in. Time stood still for a moment. He walked over to the table and sat down. <sighs> it was wonderful to see him again. He looked like his old self, not frail from his ordeal. He smiled at me and I felt happy. I said, I wish I was with you. He looked me straight in the eyes and said, no, you don't. No other words were spoken. He got up from the table. I knew he had to go. I walked around to him and he hugged me so hard I thought, my ribs would break. It was the best feeling in the world. I didn't want to let go, and... But I did. I was lying in my bed. I looked around the room, but he wasn't there. My body could still feel the squeeze from his arms. I thought, I thought about what he meant to me, and... That I was so glad that he let me know that... what I meant to him. <laughs>